Hello, Jumbo everyone. Like we say back home in Congo where I'm from, my name is Chilanda and I want to welcome you to Library Without Borders. All right, without further ado, I would like to introduce myself. I am a mom of four. I have two boys, two girls, and I have also a husband and uh, I love reading books. I've been reading books since I was eight years old, back when I still lived in Congo. And I remember I went with my class uh, for the first time to the library there, and I was just like, what world is this, you know? And ever since then, I've been infatuated with books. Fast forward, we moved to Canada. My family and I moved to Canada. There I met my best friend with whom we started this reading journey. And first category of books or genre that we started reading were romance books, guys. So I am actually filming from my living room here, but my library is downstairs and I will give you a little tour once I'm done my video. But I brought a few books here just to show you a little bit of um, the books that I read. And as I said, I started reading historical romance and one of my favorite authors from that um, category of books was Beatrice Small. I don't know if you guys went through Beatrice Small, man. Her books were fantastic. I mean, they were the books where I learned about um, Lord and ladies and shining armors and castles and taming the damsel in distress, you know, all that good stuff. So yeah, there was also Johanna um, Lindsay, there was Mary Barlow. Those are just a few of the authors that I started reading when I was, I think 12, yeah, 12, 13 years old. At high school, I met my first black teacher who introduced us to some black um, authors. And the first one I read was actually um, Jerome, Eric Jerome Dickey. And his first book that I read was actually Between Lovers. And I think it was in grade nine, grade, grade 10. You can just imagine. If you know Eric Jerome Dickey, his books were very sultry. You know, they're very, they're sensual books, they're sexual books. And I mean, hey, what can I say? I was curious, you know? God, it was fantastic. I mean, it was really um, shocking for me just because, again, I didn't know about um, a girl and a girl, a guy and a guy. I mean, and that book was both based about uh, a girl who loved both her men and a girl. So that's basically the story. So yeah, so I read Eric Drum Dickey and then I read books by Omar Tyree, remember Fly Girl? I read books by Zane. Zane, child, did you read Zane? Oh my God. Zane was incredible. Like her books were very sensual, sexual. Like she she brought a world that I was not aware of, you know, in terms of the sexuality of the books. They were intense, you know. I remember I read um, Chocolate Flavor. I think I have, yeah, there was Succulent. They're short stories of, you know, short little stories of different people. Um, yeah, there was Caramel Flavor. And then I think Skycraper, I read a few books by her, so um, I enjoyed her book. To tell you the truth, all these books, I read them during different stages of my life. I don't know if I'll be able to go back to them, just because I know reality, especially when you talk about like, you know, love, romance, and all that good stuff. I mean, I live my own romance, but I'm also living in reality. So it's hard for me to just go back to these books, but they definitely, they, they helped me. Um, they shaped my way of seeing love and my expectations. After that, I, I started reading a, a fiction literature. Most of the books that I discover in that category or that genre was by Paolo Coelho, but I started reading his book, which was titled The Alchemist. I love that book. And got one of the books that I have was Brighta uh, by Paolo Coelho. And then I also read Khaled Husseini, um, The Cut Runner, and then A Thousand Splendid Sun, The Cut Runner. Oh my God, oh my God. I think it was in Iraq, you know? And then it's just uh, the story about these two boys and they're from different, um, Case, I guess 
uh, but like, it was a lovely book. It was a lovely book. There was also A Thousand Splendid Sun on my, this part in that book, I remember, I still remember because I read it a while ago and the lady was married to this guy that was so mean to her, so brutal. And one time she cooked food for him. He didn't like it. You know what, she, what he did? He put pebbles and told her to eat it and her teeth broke. Oh my gosh. But anyways, it was a beautiful story. And uh, yeah, outside of Kala Hussein, Hosseini, um, Paolo Coelho, I read um, books like Their Eyes Were Watching God, I, started, I read The Help, I read um, The Book of Negroes uh, by I think Lawrence Hill, um, I read um, Small Island, I read uh, The Island Beneath the Sea, I uh, I read a couple of books in that uh, that category, fiction literature. I think most of the books that I really own in that category. And uh, fast forward to my early twenties and late teens. Actually, it was a time for me where I you you know obviously you, you grow up, you start to fall in love, and there's heartbreak. So during that period, I needed to find a way to basically heal, and I discovered self help books. So I read my first self-help book actually was by uh, Joyce Meyer, yes. It was The Battlefield of the Mind. That book revolutionized me, guys. It was from that book that I learned that you are not a slave to your emotions. You control your emotions. You control what's going on in your head. And if you want to heal, you have to control your emotions and everything happens in your mind. That was basically the battlefield of the mind. Like everything is in your mind. So from that point on, like I started learning about, about the plasticity of the brain and some of the books that I have about the brain were unleash the power, uh, a female brain, uh, making a good brain great. I also have emotional intelligence. They really helped me not only get over my heartbreaks, but also uh, rewire my brain. And I was just in love with knowing that you can basically learn, um, you can relearn different habits. You don't have to be stuck in the same old habits. I love that idea and it, it really revolutionized my way of being, of seeing things, and of handling problems and issues. Right? I took a little break just because I started having my kids, I had a family, and you know when you have a family, you don't always have that time for you to read and, and so on. I started reading again during COVID, when COVID hit. And I must say, the kind of reader I am today, I read by mood. Sometimes, if I'm angry, <laughs> I will go in my self-help books, and find again the book about controlling your emotions and things like that if i'm happy i would probably read a book like um he guy you know i'm, I'm like and i'm i'm in i'm in a good state of mind so i would read this book and actually did you guys read Ikiga? it was really good it talks about longevity living up to 100 or the places um in the world mostly in japan i think where people live a long life and i um started reading um the vanishing half i read love in color and then I read All oh, My Rage by Sabah Tahir. Basically, those are the books that I, I read by moods, you know, and whatever genre um, I'm into at that time, I'll read it. Like, I'm not mostly, I don't read fantasy, but like I, I can read it if it's a good book. And again, if it's very hyped up, I mean, I'm gonna be like, let me discover what's the hype about, you know? So I'm gonna do a little review of this book in my next video. So stay tuned for this one. And um, I'm also going to do a little review about this book, guys. We need to talk about this book, Viola Davis' book. Oh, my God, we need to talk about it. But anyways, guys, that was a little introduction about who I am and my journey with books. I hope you liked the content. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you liked it and you enjoyed it and you, you want to encourage me to be part of this booktube community, please like my video subscribe and i'll see you in my next video bye